Pennsylvania is far removed from Tornado Alley, but that hasn't stopped some of the brightest teachers and researchers in severe storms from putting down roots here. And we're happy to be joined this evening on Weather World by one of those severe weather specialists, Dr. Yvette Richardson from the Department of Meteorology at Penn State. Welcome to Weather World. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Now, you received your PhD from Oklahoma, mm -hmm. pretty much the heart of Tornado Alley. And yes. now you've moved to central Pennsylvania, where we don't get a lot in the way of severe weather. How tough has that been? Well, it's definitely been a change. Um, but in terms of doing my research, it's actually been just fine. Um, I think what is hard to realize sometimes is that we, we do need to be out in the field to collect data around these storms, but then there's a long period after that that is mainly spent in your office doing a lot of analysis. And so that you can do very well here in Pennsylvania, as long as you're willing to travel out now and then to get some more data. Right, and if I recall correctly, you actually brought uh, a piece of equipment here, a mobile Doppler radar, one of the Doppler on wheels, to Penn State a couple years ago mm -hmm. to be used in a course in radar meteorology mm -hmm. and to actually do some storm chasing. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, this was a, a project that I did with Dr. Paul Markowski and Dr. Hans Berlindi and um, Dr. Joshua Werman. And our idea was that it would be good for students to really experience a complete field project from beginning to end within a course structure. So we, we did a two-sequence course, um, two-semester sequence, and in the first semester we had a field project called PAMREX where students had to take the radars out, they had to t decide what, what phenomena they wanted to look at, um, which days were good to go, and they went out and collected a lot of data. And then in the second semester they had to analyze the data. So The fun part. The fun part. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Now, in the last couple of years, what do you think with all these mobile Doppler radars heading out to chase storms, what do you think is the most surprising thing we've learned by getting up close and personal with these severe thunderstorms? Well, we've learned that tornadoes are, are very, it's very difficult to tell when a storm is going to make a tornado and when it's not because they often look very similar on radar, um, but then one does make one and one doesn't. Um, the advantage you get by going up really close with the radar is that you can really see the fine structure in the wind fields. And what we see is that there are really many different scales of rotation going on at the same time. The interaction between those scales is probably quite important and something we don't really understand quite yet. Yeah, and one of the ways you help to increase that understanding in addition to getting out in the field is you do a lot of computer modeling mm -hmm. of severe thunderstorms. Now, mm -hmm. what goes into making a computer model of a severe thunderstorm and one that could potentially produce a tornado? Well, to model thunderstorms, um, you basically need lots and lots of equations. <laughs> and in that, you're, you're saying that you have some understanding of how things should evolve. You have, you have laws that should dictate how the wind field changes. You have laws that say when water vapor should condense. Um, and so if you can express all of those as equations, then basically you, you march through in little tiny steps of time and figure out what the next state of the atmosphere should be at that time. To get a thunderstorm in particular, we usually put in some specified wind profile with height and some specified temperature and moisture profile with height. And then we put in a warm bubble and start <laughs> a storm and see what we get. And you talk about those little time increments. What time increment do you have to use in order to capture the, the scales that you want to see? Um, for the things that I've been doing, about six seconds. Six seconds mm -hmm. of real time mm -hmm. in the computer model, I yeah. see. Now, one of your research collaborators is a gentleman named Josh Werman, mm -hmm. who runs an organization mm -hmm. called the Center for Severe Weather Research. And I noticed yes. one of your most recent papers with Josh talks about the potential catastrophic effects of a tornado crashing into mm -hmm. an urban area. Now, that must have been both, both fascinating and scary to prepare. Yes, um, it, it's a little sobering, I would say, to take a model tornado based on the tornadoes we've observed and basically kind of run it over a city and see what kind of destruction it would cause. Um, we did that by, by using data telling us what kind of structures are in these cities and what the population densities are. And then you have to assume some probability of death, given that people in certain structures experience certain wind speeds. So it, it was a sobering study. Um, in a place where houses are very close together, such as Chicago, uh, you end up 
with deaths sometimes in the thousands for a tornado similar to one that went through Oklahoma City several years ago. Okay. And uh, let's finish up by talking about why I've seen you so busy lately. I know you have a proposal <laughs> due very soon for a project yeah. called Vortex 2. Tell us a little mm -hmm. about that. Vortex 2 is a, a field project that um, will be carried out in 2009 and 2010 in the spring and early summer. It's an extension of Vortex 1, which was in 1994 and 1995, and the idea here is to take the mobile radars out, to take cars, instrumented, such that they can sense water vapor, um, pressure, winds, and basically have all of these sampling the storm at the highest density possible so that we can get a really complete data set of all the governing variables in the storm. So basically you're going to try to throw the kitchen sink at severe thunderstorms in a couple uh, in a couple years. That's what we hope to do. Okay. Well, Dr. Yvette Richardson from the Department of Meteorology, thank you very much for joining us on Weather World. Thank you. And we'll be back in a moment with a recap of the short-range forecast.